stay two days longer. And then he went to the tomb and began to call Lazarus from the day. He says, Lazarus, come forth. Okay. Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus really came forth. When Jesus walked in divine timing, there was a release of what? Resurrection power. And when there was a release of resurrection power, the circumstances, the environment was changed. Did you see in the Bible, in the Word? Yeah. Okay. The sisters were what? Weeping. They were weeping. Uh, it, was a, it was an atmosphere of grief and sorrow. But when Lazarus came alive, what is it? The whole atmosphere changed. I say the whole atmosphere changed. So God is saying to you that when you walk in His timing, God is able to turn circumstances around. God is able to turn your circumstances. He is able to change the situation from mourning to joy, from grieving to hope. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. God is saying to you and I in this year 2012, walk in this time and begin to see the hand of God, begin to see the resurrection power and the resurrection life of God flow through your life. Okay? When the resurrection life and the resurrection power of God flow through your life, circumstances will be turned around. Yes, circumstances will be turned around. God is in the midst of changing things, changing atmospheres. I say God is in the midst of changing he doesn't want you to be subdued. He doesn't want you to be affected by problems. He doesn't want you to be affected, to be so overwhelmed by the circumstances in your life. He says to you, no my will and no my time. He says, no my will and no my time. So when you know the will of God and when you walk in His time, God will unleash His power. I remember two, two years ago, there was a lady who fell and she was admitted to hospital in intensive care unit. And the report from the doctors, Singapore doctors, was that this woman, even if she survives, she will be a vegetable. Meaning to say that she will, be, she will not be able to walk. And so, together with a co-worker, we went into the hospital. And as we went into the hospital, there was a lot of hindrance. The nurses were coming to the room, doing some tests. They were shooting us out of the room, doesn't want us to be there long, while we were just in the midst of prayer. So they told us, sorry, uh, you please get out of the room. We need to do some tests. So we went out of the room, and we came back again. We refused to allow hindrances to affect us. So we prayed against those hindrances. So the second time we prayed, we went inside the room and we laid hands on this woman who was in coma. She was already in coma for several days. She couldn't wake up. And the report from the doctors was a very helpless, hopeless kind of case, meaning to say that even if this woman is alive, she will not be able to be well at all. And so we laid hands on her and begin to speak and prophesy to her and begin to speak the life of Jesus. Her eyes twitched and her fingers moved. Her eyes twitched and her fingers moved. So again, the doctors came and, and knocked on the door and said, it's time, you're gonna go. But we seized every opportunity that we had and we began to continue persevering until the, the very last minute. And so, after finished praying, we knew that her eyes had twitched and her fingers moved. Three days later, she got up. She could not, this woman is now well, able to talk, although still not able to walk. But her condition was not like what the doctor said. Literally, resurrection life and power flow. Resurrection life and power flow in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. God 
receive to you in Trinity Church, believe for the resurrection life and power to flow in your life. Okay? Believe that when you understand the will of God and the timing of God, then God is saying to you, He, he wants His power to be released. Yes or no? Yes, not only just His power to be released, but God is saying to you that He wants to turn circumstances. Will your circumstances be changed? I say, will your circumstances be changed? Yes. No longer be subdued by your circumstances. No longer be subdued by your problems. No longer allow the situation to cause you to be in an emotional state. Do not allow circumstances to cause you to be in a, uh, an emotional state that you are not able to rise. His mother was telling Jesus, Jesus, my brother, if you had come here earlier. You see, mother did not understand that Jesus carried power to change. In this particular passage, Jesus did not just change the circumstances. He changed the condition of man. Lazarus was dead. Then he says, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus came back to life. He changed the condition of man. When Jesus walked in the timing of God, he's able to change the condition of man. He's able to change circumstances. If circumstances is one of helplessness, hopelessness, Jesus can turn it around and bring hope. Jesus can turn mourning and grief into joy. Yes, into rejoicing, into celebration. Yes or no? So the season of mourning and groaning, God is saying, will be coming to an end. Yeah. 2011 is past and gone. Grieve no more. Do not be upset by those circumstances anymore. What is that can come alive? Yeah. What is that in your life? By the resurrection power and by the word of God. It is not just Jesus, but it is His word. It is Lazarus. It was the word of Jesus that was being released. The condition of, G of Lazarus was changed from deadness to life. The people, not just the sisters Martha and Mary, but all who were with the sisters weeping and in sorrow. Can you see that? The releasing of the word of Jesus. So the releasing of God's word is going to turn things around in your life, in my life. God is going to change conditions. God is going to change circumstances. God is saying, walk in His time. When you walk in His time, there will be a release of what? Divine wisdom, divine understanding. Secondly, there's a release of resurrection power. Amen. God wants to release resurrection power. Never mind what the circumstances are. Never mind how hopeless is the situation. How hopeless is the problem. You know, when we went to see this lady in the hospital, the family was grieving. We went there, everyone was just lining up to see this woman lying in bed with chips all over her. But when her eyes twitched, when her eyes twitched and her fingers moved, we knew God is doing a miracle. Yes. We knew God is doing a miracle. After he said, it has been three years already and she's still alive. She's still alive, she could talk. You know, although her, weeks are, her legs are still weak, she could not walk very well. But at least she's alive. She's not uh, paralyzed. She's still able to move. Sisters, hear the word of God. Be like the sons of Issachar. Know the season, know what to do. So in every situation that you encounter, in every problem that you encounter, ask the Lord, Lord, what is your will in this situation? Now, once you understand the will, then what is your way and your time? 
when you begin to walk in the ways of God and in the time of God, then there will be a release of heavenly resources. There will be release of the heavens that will open. When the heavens open, everything of heaven will come down. Life came down. You see, when G Jesus knew that it was the will of the Father for him to raise Lazarus, he says, I'm going to wake Lazarus from sleep. So he knew that it is God's will for him to raise Lazarus. So he stayed two days longer. You see, he, he understood the will of God and walked in the timing of God and there, power was released. Not only when, when the power of resurrection power was released, the condition of Lazarus was changed, circumstances was changed. Amen. So don't be in a state of helplessness. This year, 2012, no matter what situation comes your way, know that you and I Throughout the time he was praying, and because of 
dead. He told his disciples, get up, let us be going. What did he say? In verse 45, he said, the hour is at hand. He knew the timing of his capture. Then he says, the one who betrayed me is at hand. He knew who the person is going to Judas. Twenty twelve is a year where you and I can no longer be sleepy anymore. Just like Jesus, God is saying, "Get up, let us be going." Amen. God is saying to you and I, "Get up, let us be going." Whatever that has been hindering us, whatever that has been uh, that has been stopping us, are obstacles that's hindering us in twenty eleven us to be weary and worn out and tired and sleepy and insensitive this year 2012 no more yes. amen this year 2012 God is saying to you that he wants to sharpen your spirit yes. he wants to sharpen you so well that you will be able to discern yes. that you will be able to discern he doesn't want the church to be sleeping and he doesn't want his people to be asleep anymore. Now Jesus was questioning the disciples, why are you still resting? Why are you still sleeping? This is not the hour to sleep. The hour of crisis is coming. And here you are just, you know, on your own. No. Sisters, God doesn't want you and I to be just being busy about our own concerns, our own matters. But he says, don't be caught sleeping. Don't sleep anymore. Be alert. Wake up. Be alert. Wake up. When you and I walk in God's timing, we will be very discerning. We will discern timing. We will discern motives of people around us. We will not walk into the trap. We will not be allowing ourselves to be hurt by people who do not have the right motives because we are sharp and discerning. We are sharp and discerning. God wants His people to be committed, yes. to be covenanted with one another, love one another as I have loved you. God wants His people to be in covenant, to be in commitment to one another. But these are days where people are selfish, with selfish agendas, selfish motives. They want things for themselves. Am I right? Yes or no? They want things for themselves. So, God is wanting to protect His precious ones, His dear ones, those, his, those who are pursuing after Him. God is wanting to protect them, not allowing them to fall into the traps of the enemy. Just like Jesus, He was on God. Just like Jesus, He was on God. So, God is saying to you and I that in this season of 2012, you and I must walk in the timing of God. Not just in the timing of God, but you must understand the will. Ask His will. Lord, what is your will? What is your plan? And then be able to receive the release of His divine wisdom, divine understanding, release of resurrection, life and power, and at the same time, a release of discernment. God wants you and I to be very discerning. How then are we going to walk in God's time? You see, the secret to Jesus walking in the timing for God is found in Mark chapter 1. That's the secret. Why is it that Jesus understood the will of God, understood the will of the Father, and knew how to walk in the timing of God? And this is found in Mark chapter 1, verse 33 to 35. Okay, let's read from verse 32. He says, When the evening came, after the sun had set, they began bringing to him all who were ill and those who were demon possessed and the whole city had gathered at the door all city had gathered at the door he healed many who were, who were ill with various diseases and cast out many demons and he was not permitting the demons to speak because they knew who he was verse 35 this is the key in the early morning while it was still dark jesus got up left the house went away to a secret secluded place and was praying. Jesus was praying. Then Simon and his companions searched 
for him. They found him and said to him, everyone is looking for you. They said to them, let us go somewhere else to the towns nearby so that I may preach there also, for that is what I came for. You see, verse 38, what is it? The purpose or the will of God in verse 38. Jesus understood the will of God. And then in verse 32, 33, he says that the whole city, everybody was looking for him. He had a busy ministry. But in verse 35, he says Jesus got up early in the morning. What was he doing? Communing with God. So Jesus knew his priorities. Jesus knew his priorities. He was not, again, he was not pressured by the needs of people. He was not pressured by circumstances. He was not propelled. No, his life was not revolving around uh, needs and circumstances and getting himself so tired. Well, no, he knew what was his priority. He knew the most important thing that needs to be done. The most important thing was to talk to the Lord. This is early in the morning when he go to a secluded place. That's the key. So the key for you and I, ladies, is to set aside time, no matter how busy we are, no matter how tired we are, set aside time, and in that time is to pray and commune with God. When you pray and commune with God, that's where you hear God's voice through His Word. You hear God's voice through His Word, and you will be able to hear the instruction of the Lord. Step by step, He will instruct you. That's how Jesus walked. So Jesus, He spent time. He spent time very often with the Heavenly Father. And because He spent time with the Heavenly Father, He was able to know the will of the Father. He was able to know the ways of the Father. He was able to know the timing of the Father. The will, ways, and timing. So when you and I commune with the Lord, when you draw close to the Lord, when you draw near to the Lord, He will draw near to you. Yes. He will draw near. The Word of God says, My sheep hear my voice. Right or not? Yes. My sheep hear my voice. So God is wanting you and I to hear His voice. Not just hear His voice, and but to walk in the ways of God and in the will of God and in the timing of God. He doesn't want you and I to stumble anymore. Remember the scripture that we read earlier? It says the one who walk in the light will not stumble. It is those who walk in darkness. Why? Why does a person walk in darkness when they are doing things, make their own decisions, make their own plans, plans, and that is why they hit against the wall. But when you seek the will of God and say, oh God, this is the situation. What shall I do now? Seek his counsel. What shall I do? Once you have the will of God, the rush in getting it, Lord, how do you want it to be done? His way. Then, when shall I do it? Jesus walked in this man throughout his life. At age 12, he know the will of the Father. Where was he? At the temple. By me. He knew that he had to raise Lazarus from the dead. What is that? The will of God. He waited two days later. Can you see? He waited two days later, tiny. Okay. And then he knew that in the garden of Gethsemane that he will be captured, he will be crucified on the cross. He knew that was what he's going to face. He's going to face a crisis. So what did he do? He prayed. When he prayed, he received strength and he understood when the time will come. That's why he told the disciples, get up, let us be going. The hour is at hand. The one who betrayed me is at hand. So God is wanting to release discernment to his people, women. God is wanting to release discernment to women so that you will be very sharp and you will be able to discern the motives of people around you. You'll be able to discern the timing when certain things are going to happen. You'll be able to discern. Just two weeks ago, I was in Singapore on the train, and 
And when I came out of the control station, I heard a voice. I wanted to go to a building to collect to collect a, a bottle of uh, uh, vitamins. So I would normally go through the tunnel, right through the tunnel of the train station before I get to the building. But it's like the Holy Spirit said, you don't have to go through the tunnel, just come out of the control station, out onto the roadside. So I stepped out, and the minute I stepped out, right before my eyes in front of me was a big banner, not a banner, a big advertisement. It was Ecclesiastes 3.11. He made all things beautiful in his time. Now, if I had not walked through that, I would have missed looking that big bag, big advertisement. I would have missed that. And if I come back, I would still go by the underground tunnel again to the train station. But I heard this voice say, just come out on the tunnel, go by, walk by the roadside, the main road of Orchard Road. So I obeyed, not knowing why. But I, with the minute I come out, step onto the landing, that was the main road, and in front of me was this big CK Chang building with the words, he made all things beautiful in his time. Ecclesiastes Street level. Then I walked to the building further down, beaming away, smiling. Everybody was looking, where is this woman uh, walking up by herself smiling? Why? Because the word of God just lifted me up so much. God was telling me, in my timing, when you walk my timing, everything will be beautiful. Everything will be beautiful. And I was driving along the road together with my parents, going, going back after an afternoon lunch. Again, I heard the voice, look left. Now, I was traveling along a busy road. You know, Singapore roads are very busy. If you just turn and you, you wouldn't know when the next car is going to come uh, across your pathway. So I just was split second, look left, and when I looked left, there was this long, long stretch of billboard at the bus stop. And it says, I am changing everything. I am changing everything. So it was like God speaking to me, God is saying, yes, follow me. This is my will. I am changing everything. Exactly one week later, I received that word in Jesus Street, that on the big billboard on the building. So, I was doing something, you can hear God's voice, and for a split second, you can see things that God wants you to see. Okay. For a split second, I turned my head and I saw that I could reach, <laughs> focus right again driving on the road. But I received the message that God wants me to read. I am changing everything. God is saying He's changing everything. What is of the old must be torn down. Don't hang on to the past anymore. Sisters, don't ever hang on to the past. The past is gone. Let the past be past. The past is gone. Let it be past. Move towards the future because God is changing everything. God is making all things beautiful in His time. Amen. Let's rise. Oh, shika rama and rama kariyandara ba sikite le karama and rama kariyandara ba O kariyandara man raskite le me kariyandara man rende sikite le E kariyandara ba sikite Do you want to walk in God's timing? Yes? Yes, do you want to walk in the will of God? Yeah? Oh, shika rama and rama sikite le kariyandara ba sikite even as you pray, I just believe that God is wanting to set many of you free from the circumstances that has held you bound. Right or not? Yes? In the name of Jesus, I proclaim that all negative situation that caused you to be bound, be free right now. Be free from your negative circumstances, from all the problems that has caused you to be emotionally upset and emotionally down in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let all confusion be.
be removed. When your mind is not able to receive hope, when there is negativeness, depression in your mind, when you feel that you just do not know what to do, there's indecisiveness, you, you, you are in a confused mental state. Let all those things be removed from your mind right now. Yes, let it be removed right now. Where your heart has been burdened, where your heart has been grieved, where your heart has been sad because of circumstances in your life. Ah, let there be hope in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the word of God bring life once again. Amen. Let the word of God bring hope once again. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Yes, receive right now the mind of Christ. Receive right now the mind of Christ. Let divine wisdom, let understanding flow in Jesus' name. Amen. Let understanding and let wisdom flow in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the resurrection life Begin to pray. Begin to pray. 